So what happens when you take one of these lithium batteries, you take one of these standard rechargeable batteries, you lock them in a room, give them a romantic novel and let them do the dirty, what do you get out of it? Well, what you get is you get the love child called the Kent Lee battery. Yeah, these batteries are awesome. Keep watching and um, I'll tell you more about them. Hi there guys, it's uh, Catanonia here, Steve, and welcome to another video on air gunology. On this uh, channel we do a whole load of air rifles, air pistols, and this video, technology video. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button down below, check out the other videos, check out air rifling, you might like it if you're just here for the technology. But today we're talking about these Kent Lee batteries on here. So if you've got these, leave a comment down below as well. Everything I'm talking about in here, if you want to get some of these, and our Facebook group is down in the video description down there. So um, check that out as well. So yeah, like I said, we're talking about the Kent Lee batteries here. And the intro may have been a bit of a bit of a wind up, I know, but I was being truthful there. At the end of the day, we've all used these AA and uh, AAA batteries, uh, nickel hydride um, rechargeable batteries on here. And we've all seen these um, lithium batteries in one format or another. You can get them in uh, this format as well, which you would have seen in torches. And for those that um, electronic cigarette vaping, you will be very familiar with the 18 type batteries here. So what happens if you take one of these batteries a lithium, one of these nickel hydride batteries, rechargeable, you mate them together, what do you get? What you get, effectively, is the Kent Lee batteries. Now these batteries are actually capacity rated at 3.7 volts per battery. Yeah, you heard that right, 3.7 volts per battery. However, they discharge at 1.5 volts, which is the standard for AA batteries. You can also get these in AAA batteries as well. Um, and they come in many different power levels. These are 3000 milliamp hours. So you think about that. This battery here, let's just take one of these bad boys out here. One of these batteries is actually 3.7 volts internally and discharges at 1.5 volts. Now that means that basically what you're getting is you're getting a much, much, much longer lifespan of 1.5 volt discharge. Now why is that important? All right, quite simply, if we take a standard battery, let's just take a standard disposable battery here. Here's some energizers, it could be Duracell, it could be anything. These kick out 1.5 volts. And if you put a voltmeter across them, as you discharge the battery over a period of time, you'll see that voltage drop. And we all know that because if you put these in a torch, you'll see the torch will get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until there's not enough voltage to run the torch. And that's when you throw the batteries away or you go and recharge them. And that's because the torch basically doesn't really care how much voltage it gets because of that's basically how the, how the lighting system works. The more volts, the brighter the torch is. But a computer or a camera or um, anything that's electronical such as um, one of my um, rifle scopes. Let me get my ATN Excite. Here's my ATN Excite here. You may have seen this in some of the videos. If not, check it out further down. This takes AA batteries or you can put an external battery pack on it. But this unit is actually a computer and it requires a minimum of 1.3 volts per cell of AA battery. It's got four of them in there, but it requires a minimum 1.3. So if you put some of these standard batteries in it, or even high capacity batteries, that start off at 1.5 volts. Within 15 minutes, they're down to less than 1.3 volts and the computer will switch off. That's a problem, massive, massive problem. Well, these batteries are different. What these are is quite simply, is they are effectively a lithium battery. That's what they are. So the lithium battery is the core part of this battery in there. And that stores um, and it's running at 3.7 volts. So anywhere between 3.7 and 4.2-ish volts in there. And then there's a little microchip in the end of this that actually then takes that bigger capacity and filters it down and trickle feeds it through at 1.5 volts out of the normal terminals. All in the nice dinky AA or AAA format. So what that actually means is that you've got a big tank reserve of 3.7 volts trickled down to 1.5 volts and these things will give a constant 1.5 voltage for over seven hours, nearly eight hours. That means I can put them batteries into 
my ATN X site, plug it in, and it will run for seven to eight hours compared to 10 to 15 minutes using standard batteries. Because effectively what I've got here is a proper lithium type battery in an AA format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break away down into the tabletop and just explain, show you some pictures of these batteries, show you how they all work, the special charge and everything you get. Okay, so we come tabletop mode here and you see that we've got the Kentley batteries here. So what I'm going to do is just take one of these out and um, what we're going to do is try to show you the differences between this and a normal battery. So I've just got a standard um, AA battery here. This could be a rechargeable. This one is actually disposable. And we're just going to put them both on the table here. What I'm going to do is zoom in and see if we can show you where the major differences on these two batteries are. So let's just bring these centre shot. Okay, so that sort of works there. We'll just get our little pointing device. Now with a standard battery, you have the negative terminal which is at the bottom. And then we have the positive terminal that's at the top here. And basically it discharges out at 1.5 volts. And that 1.5 volts slowly, slowly decreases until the battery has run out. That's your standard battery. Um, but if you look at the Kentley battery, it is different. What you can see here is you've got your standard 1.5 output here. Your negative is the same on the bottom. But you'll notice there's this little grey insulator part here. And this little grey insulator part is actually a separate battery. Um, I'll leave some pictures around so you can see it. But basically, that there is, if I put the multimeter across there and the negative, I will get 3.7 to 4 point something volts, which is the true capacity of the battery. But internally in here, there is a microprocessor that is then controlling that and pushing out a constant 1.5 volts through the, the positive terminal. So what you're getting here is a, is a 3.7 volt battery that is being throttled down to push out a constant 1.5 volts over a very long period of time, seven to eight hours. So this means we need a different charger. We need a charger that can charge this thing up to 3.7 volts, not a standard 1.5 volt charger here. So let's take these out of the way and let's actually have a look at the charger itself. So if we bring the charger in now and have a look, what we can see now is that on the charger, um, it's a USB charger at 5 volts, uh, 5 volts um, standard USB charger. Um, put it in the wall is what I would do. Um, basically here what we have is a standard negative spring. But at the front we actually have a cup section here. Which actually nestles on the grey isolator part here. So if I plug a battery into it and drop it in and have a closer look. And again if we zoom in, uh, hopefully you can see that. What you're actually seeing is that the negative, the, the positive terminal is not actually touching or being charged through. It is actually charging up the exterior part, that, that isolator part, and it's charging that up to 3.7 volts. So this is actually a 3.7 volt battery hiding away in a 1.5 volt AA disguise, if you want to put it that way. So once this is charged up to 3.7 volts, you can then take it out and then use it as a standard AA battery through here and here, discharging at a constant 1.5 volts. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring a multimeter in and just show you how this and show you this in practice. So here's our multimeter. And what I'm going to do is just pick up a disposable, a standard disposable battery. So here's our standard disposable battery. Let's just bring that into screen so we can see it. We're running DC voltage here, and if we go and have a look. 1.56 volts. So this battery will kick out 1.56 volts and it will slowly, slowly decrease until the battery runs out. So it'll go 1.5 down to 1.4, down to 1.3, 1.2, etc., etc., until the device that is running this battery says, ah, there's not enough voltage for me, and that's it, game over. Let's now bring in the Kentley. Right, so if we look at the Kentley and I do exactly the same, I'm gonna get 1.5 volts coming through that terminal there. Absolutely no problem at all. But if I now touch the isolator part, look at that, 4.22 volts. So it's between 3.7 and 4.22 volts is the actual true capacity of this battery. It's running through the microprocessor then, which is then discharging it through the positive and negative terminal at 1.51 volts. So obviously you're going to get a lot of charge at 1.5 volts, seven to eight hours worth 
out of this compared to a standard AA battery. But of course, that does come at a cost. A cost of about £10, maybe even £11 where you get it from per battery. Anyway, let's go back up and um, we'll discuss this a little bit further. Okay, hopefully I wasn't getting too technical. I deliberately tried to simplify that. You know, some of you guys out there have got full physics degrees into how the electronics works. I'm sure you have, and you can rip me apart in the comments if you want. But I just really wanted to try and dumb it down a little bit and just simplify it on how it all works. And I think the analogy works quite well there. So yeah, like I said before, the downside with these is they're damn expensive. Um, you're looking at 10 plus pounds, depending where you get them from. Now I got mine on a Black Friday deal, um, so I got a, this pack here, and there's a pack of eight in them. Um, you're not going to be able to probably get that anymore, but keep your eye out on Amazon. They come up very regularly on Amazon, uh, nice and cheap on there. But you're looking at about 10 pound per battery, including the charger on there. But they will last as long as any standard rechargeable battery, 500 plus cycles on there. And they will work because of the form factor they are, these are double A or triple A's that you can get, they will work in any device and they will give a constant 1.5 volts. Now like I said before, all batteries will have a power drop. They will start at 1.5 volts and they will drop down to basically down to one volt like that. And depending on the electronics that you put these in, there is a cutoff point when they will not supply enough juice to the actual piece of electronics that you're trying to run. So if you actually do use these batteries, you're gonna get at least seven to eight hours of constant 1.5 volts. Once the internal capacity of 3.7 volts has been drained, the microchip will then shut these batteries off, just like any standard of the lithium batteries. It'll just switch them off on there and they'll disappear. So you'll see that my ATNX site, when I use it, I run for seven hours and then it will just switch off. Um, but yeah, absolutely brilliant, brilliant concept. Unique batteries, but remember, just remember that you can only charge them with the charger. So if you're getting these batteries for the first time, make sure you get a charger with them, otherwise you will not be able to charge them up. You can get them the charger like this, you can get them in wall-mounted USB chargers as well, compact chargers, and you can get multiple packs of these. Uh, yeah, just, just search around for them. So do I recommend these batteries? Well, if you're running anything that is power critical, such as, for example, my ATN XI or some camera systems or anything that requires a constant high voltage or anything that you're finding that you're putting standard batteries in or um, extra long life batteries or rechargeable batteries and the whole thing sort of runs for about an hour and then that's it. Think about putting some Kentle, um, Kentleys in there because of basically you should be getting seven to eight hours runtime out of those. Obviously though, you're paying a price. So yes, I do recommend them. Search around on Amazon. I'll leave the links down below for you. But um, really, really cool battery on there. Um, so let me know, have you tried these? I know a lot of guys out there use them in the ATNX sites because of obviously this is an air rifle channel as well and this is where I've come across them. But um, let me know what other applications have you used these for? Um, what experience have you got compared to normal batteries in which devices? Leave the comments down below, help everybody out, uh, else out as well. So I've searched around on, uh, on YouTube, there's not many videos about these, these batteries so I really wanted to sort of bring these to your attention. Um, as always, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, leave any comments, was the video good? Great, give me a thumbs up, was it crap? Let me know, give me the thumbs down, I'd really like to know. Um, don't forget to subscribe, Patreon, and all that side of stuff, and check these other videos out I've got coming around as well. So, and um, I'll see you on the next video.